YouTube, it's Rosalie again, uh, back with another video. This time we are going to be learning how to take care of any wild bird. So, what I have here is a common pigeon, common American pigeon. Um, you can find them anywhere. It's, there's nothing special about this guy. He's about four weeks old, I would say. If you were to come across a bird that looked like this with its plumage, it's probably fine where it is, unless if it looks like it's in distress or if it's unhealthy, then it's okay to intervene. But the mother is nearby and it's, it's, it's a fledgling, so it's learning how to survive and it lives its life on the ground for a couple weeks before it learns to fly. Otherwise, if you do end up with a bird, I will show you how to feed and care for and manage a wild animal. This is the formula. I'm just going to start by placing the syringe in the, the bird's right side of their mouth. So I want to put it in facing this way, if that makes sense. Uh, that's where the crop is. The other side is the windpipe, so you want to avoid that side. I also want to say I'm not a professional. Uh, that being said, I did work at the Wildlife Rehabilitation Center of Minnesota for a summer. I worked with pigeons there and all birds that were brought in to the avian nursery. It is illegal to handle wild birds in the United States. Uh, pigeons are the exception. It's not illegal to handle them. So that is why I made this video. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and, hey sleepy, he's ready for a nap. <laughs> but uh, I'm just gonna show you what I do. So because it's a pigeon, they feed by placing their beak inside the mother's mouth. If you don't have a pigeon, your life is going to be so much easier because it's just going to open its mouth real nice and wide. If you have a dove or a pigeon, you're going to have to get around that by um, teaching it to open its beak for you by gently squeezing the corners of its mouth. It will learn. It takes a couple days. This is still the second or third day that we've had this bird, so it's, it's still learning. It's not happy with me um, fussing with its beak all the time. If you know for a fact that you have a carnivorous or a um, insect eating bird like a robin, for example, you do want to supplement a protein into their diet. So mealworms or insects you find outside are fine. Um, anything that could be used as bait is fine. I wouldn't use fish, but um, any, any like night crawlers, that's fine. If you don't have access to formula, it's okay to feed them whole seeds, pigeons, I wanna say, whole seeds. As long as you're giving them water with it um, after, not at the same time, you can what? use your fingers as the easiest way. And it's the same tool. You would just squeeze their beak open and then literally shove it down their throats and they'll swallow it. And you want to mix some gravel or tiny rocks like in with the, or? like, like sand into the, into the seed. Not very much, a, a small amount. And that's to ensure that it gets ground up in their crops. That's what they would do in the wild. And that's a, a more natural transition because the mother would be coming back feeding them things like seeds. So it'd be a very easy transition for them. If you don't have any of that, and if you have a cat or a dog, you can actually use um, mashed up cat food as an emergency supplement. You want to use a dry food, you can crush it up and mix it with water and feed it to them. Um, that is, I, I really want to stress that that is a temporary uh, formula for them. Cat food is, does not have the nutritional value that a bird needs and they will not survive more than two or three days on that. So be sure to get them to a rehab center or get some formula um, as soon as possible um, if you're going that route. Um, it's really, really, really important to make sure that you're sanitizing yourself before and after you handle the bird. Pigeons carry salmonella and the way you catch salmonella from a pigeon is through their feces. So if you're touching the pigeon's head and beak, you're fine. You're not you're not going to get sick. But if if their bacteria gets anywhere um, on your phone, on the ground, on your pet, and you touch your pet and you touch your face, you will be very very sick. So wash your hands. It's also important to clean the syringes before well not before and after, but after every usage. Uh, or else bacteria will grow up and the bird will get sick. <clears throat> Did I say grow up? If you do come across a bird that is completely naked, um, eyes are closed, oh, that is a bird that does need help and should be in a nest, so you are very right to take them home or 
pick them up and move them out of where they are. If you can find the nest that it came from, you can absolutely put that chick back in its nest. Uh, there is, there are rumors that go around that say birds will smell their babies or the, will smell the humans on their babies and they'll reject them. It is not true. Birds have a very terrible sense of smell. That was, um, that was invented to prevent people from putting fledglings back in the nest. A bird like this. So they say, oh, look at this bird. He needs to go back. And then they put him back and the bird's right where he started. So that is why that uh, rumor came about. I'm going to feed this bird until its crop is full. Pigeons and doves have a, a very large crop that sits on their breast and it really does look like a large bosom when it's full. It's not full right now, so you can't really see it, but it would it would protrude out to about here. And um, that's when you know that the bird is full. They usually get kind of sleepy too when they're feeling full, so that's another indicator. Um, he's looking sleepy right now. If any other bird, like a, especially the young ones, even, um, like if you found a, a sparrow, a really young sparrow, their crops look like a hunk of food stuck in their throat. That's honestly what it looks like. It, it's, you might think, oh no, this poor bird's choking, but it's very normal. You did everything right. And that bird's very happy to have a full crop. So, so, so that's kind of a pocket that the yeah, food goes in. And it's a little it pocket. Lasts for several hours yeah. and gradually gets yep. digested. And the younger they are, the more frequently you'll need to feed them. Um, Birds like this who have large crops are just a breeze because you you can get away with feeding them three or four times a day and and leaving them on their own and they, they can do fine. He's also pecking. This this guy's interested in pecking, so we're trying to offer him seeds because he's old enough. He should know what he's doing. I believe that is everything I wanted to cover. If there's anything I, that I remember, I'll add it in the description. Um, if you have any questions, please, please feel free to ask. I re reply very quickly. Um, if you notice anything that I said incorrectly or inaccurately, please, please correct me. It, it, it's, it's very helpful. If you like these kinds of videos, I can make an instructional video on caring for mammals such as raccoons or even kittens if you want. I have had experience with both of them. I've also raised bunnies, but I, I've been very rarely successful with bunnies. If you would like to see any of that, please let me know. Thank you very much for watching this video. Um, leave a comment, uh, give me a like, and please subscribe. So this is the formula that I use. I've used this for years and years. I've always been successful with it. It works for all species of birds. It even works for parrots if you have a parrot at home that needs hand feeding. Um, these are my syringes over here. I like to use a small one because it avoids overfeeding and feeding them too quickly. They could choke. This is what the consistency should look like. It's like thin applesauce or pancake batter. You don't want it to be too thick or else they won't get enough hydration. It's uh, important to use bottled water, distilled water, or in our case, well water. If you don't have access to those, you can boil it and cool it, and that should be fine. But of course, if it's an emergency, any water will do. So this is all that you'll need. I just wanted to show you guys the cage setup that we have going on here. You really do not need to get a cage like this. A box is fine, or even a kennel like that works. Um, the important things are you just need to offer them food and water, which we need to change. If you're gonna feed it mealworms, be sure to uh, cut their heads off or drown them so that they don't eat through the intestines of the bird. Um, and you'd only wanna feed mealworms to say a robin or a bird like that. Um, otherwise, this is really all that you need. You can offer fruits, um, blueberries, raspberries, and strawberries, chop them up, um, offer them perches to sit on and something to hide in, and maybe some bedding if you want, but you really don't have to go crazy. Um, anything you provide for them will be fine. So, yep, this is what it looks like. <laughs> also, I want to mention that if you have a younger bird that has no feathers, its eyes are closed, it's best to keep them in a smaller container like this with a heating pad underneath. They need that heat. Um, a bird like this is fine. He's got enough feathers, so he doesn't need a heating pad. But, um, yeah, if you know it's a young bird and it's, it's too young to keep itself warm, then I really recommend a smaller container.